calculus math 11. Dance. For an angle A in standard position, there's a point P located on the terminal arm with coordinates X, Y, where X is equal to the length of the leg on the initial arm, and Y is equal to the vertical leg of the right triangle. And as the angle rotates, we can see that the distance from the origin to point P is actually just the radius of the circle that's formed. And therefore, by the Pythagorean theorem, we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Now if you consider the right triangle that we've got here and the way we used to do trigonometry, what we used to call the opposite side is really just y. The adjacent side is x and the hypotenuse is r. So by using the values x, y, and r in place of opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, we can update our previous definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. So for starters, sine is no longer opposite over hypotenuse. Sine theta is now y over r. Likewise, cosine theta no longer adjacent over hypotenuse, but now cos theta is x over r. And tan theta stops being opposite over adjacent and becomes y over x. Now for those of you who've been addicted to using SOKATOA, perhaps it's time to upgrade your acronym to Sir Kixer Tix. We can also examine what happens to the values of sine, cosine, and tangent as the angle rotates through a full 360 degrees. In quadrant one, x, y, and r are all positive, and as a result, all three trig ratios are positive. In quadrant 2, x is negative, but y and r are both positive. This means that the sine ratio is positive, while cos and tan are negative. In quadrant 3, x and y are now negative, meaning that sine and cos are negative, but tan is positive. And finally, in quadrant 4, x is positive, y is negative, and therefore sine and tan are negative, but the cosine is positive. So to recap, all of the angles are positive in quadrant 1. In quadrant 2, only sine is positive. In quadrant 3, only tan is positive. And in quadrant 4, only the cosine is positive. Each ratio has a quadrant where it is the only one that is positive. And this is important to remember. Now some people call this CAST as an acronym to remember these terms. But I don't like that acronym since it requires that you start in quadrant 4 instead of in quadrant 1. So I like to start in quadrant 1 using the acronym ASTC, listing the positive ratios in order. Now to help me remember what this stands for or the correct order, I can come up with a little sentence. And so on. Just maybe try to keep it PG, okay? Now let's do some examples here. So the point P, 6, negative 8, is on the terminal arm of an angle in standard position determine the exact trig ratios for the angle. Well, the first thing I would do is sketch this. Once I've done that, let's go ahead and calculate the value of r. We know x and y, so it's a simple case of using Pythagoras' theorem. If r squared equals x squared plus y squared, then r is 10. And this means that we can get our trig ratios quite easily as well. Sine will be negative 4 over 5. Cosine 3 over 5, and tangent, negative 4 over 3. For an angle theta in standard position, 
where sine theta is 5 over 13, find the exact values of cos theta and tan theta. If sine theta is 5 over 13, this means that y is 5 and r is 13. So solve for x. x squared plus y squared equals r squared, giving us x squared is 144. Now here's where half of you are going to say that x is equal to 12, forgetting that it's also possible for x to equal negative 12. Now originally we were told that sine is positive, which means that our angle theta could be in quadrant 1 or in quadrant 2. We can't just assume it's in one at the expense of the other. If theta is in quadrant 1, then x is 12. But if theta is in quadrant 2, then x is negative 12. If theta is in quadrant 1, then cos theta is 12 over 13, and tan theta 5 over 12. But if theta is in quadrant 2, then cosine is negative 12 over 13, and tangent is negative 5 over 12. Let's go one step further with this question. What is theta? If it's a first quadrant angle right here, what's the measure of theta? Or if it's a second quadrant angle over to here, what's the measure of theta? So get your calculator. Make sure that you're set in degrees, which we are. And let's get our calculator to calculate the inverse sine of 5 over 13, getting 22.6 degrees. Now that answer is an acute angle which means that it's our answer over here for quadrant one. Or it could also be the reference angle. So if theta is in quadrant two, then in this case, theta will be 180 minus 22.6, giving us 157.3 degrees. But what if you'd use the inverse tangent? For 5 over 12, again, we get 22.6 degrees. That's fine. But for negative 5 over 12, we get negative 22.6 degrees. Huh? Here's what it comes down to. Your calculator doesn't understand the question that you're doing. It doesn't know the context. So it just tries to give you the simplest answer that it can which means that sometimes it will give a negative answer. What I would like you to do is only to do the inverse trig calculation for positive values, which will always give you the reference angle. And then I want you to be smart enough to decide how to use the reference angle to find theta. If your angle is in quadrant one, then theta will simply be the same as the reference angle the acute angle. But if your angle is in quadrant 2, then theta is going to be 180 minus the reference angle. If your angle is in quadrant 3, theta is going to be 180 plus the reference angle. And if your angle is in quadrant 4, then theta is going to be 360 minus the reference angle. And now, here are two more for you to do on your own. Well, that's all for now. So until next time, calculator batteries charge. Plus dismissed.